do you hear voices in your head? The one that tells you to check that lock again and again and again, even though you know you've attended to it? Or does your voice tell you, if you don't do something perfectly on the first go, it's all for naught, so why even bother? Do your negative emotions reflect the way things are? I think, therefore it must be true. You have the power to change this. In the past 21 months, each and every one of you has experienced some level of fear, loss, and disconnection. And in response, each and every one of you has had to adapt and adopt to new ways of living, working, and being. This is a testament to your resilience. You've demonstrated that in order to survive in uncertainty, you don't need to necessarily eliminate it. What if I told you you could take the patterns brought forth by uncertainty and bloom them into possibility? In today's presentation, I'll share with you from my world of change management and human systems dynamics, three questions that can propel radical change in the places where you're stuck in your personal life. Three questions that can transform uncertainty into possibility. Hi. As introduced, my name is Lisa Bornellis, and I'm a transformation specialist in one of Canada's largest health authorities. My job is to compassionately lead people through complexity. Say, for example, a global pandemic. Prior to that, I was a humanitarian aid worker for the United Nations and numerous aid agencies. I've served in the Balkans, Afghanistan, and all over Africa. I'm also a mom to an uber-cool kid diagnosed with obsessive-compulsive disorder. So chaos, complexity, and change are all parts of my everyday life and work. And yet, I must confess, I sometimes hate change. And if you agree with me, we are in good company. Because let's face it, change is hard. The science tells us this. Research on the neuroscience of change speaks to the fight-or-flight response that is evoked when certainty is removed. As blood is reduced from our prefrontal cortex, where most of our considered thinking takes place, our ability to make decisions is impaired. Now add to this the COVID pandemic, and we all share a collective experience of global pan uh, upheaval. So let me say it again. Change is bloody hard. The research in my line of work tells us this. According to McKinsey and Company, seven out of 10 organizational change initiatives fail. This is often because we as leaders neglect to consider the impact that change will have on an individual. Think about that time at work when you were asked to do something differently. Whether it was adopt a new professional practice, work with new software, or try a new piece of equipment. You may have felt nervous during that process. And you may have noticed that not everyone became proficient at the same time. But the good news is that successful change is incremental and complexity is the genesis of possibility. Motivational speakers will stand on a stage such as this and proclaim, if you can dream it, you're halfway there. Well, I'm here today to share with you how to get through that second half. <laughs> so let's get back to those three questions. And I'll bet some of you are thinking, I know what these are. What is the meaning of life? Why am I here? What's for dinner? Well, my friends, I'm not going to attend to those questions today. After all, I am no philosopher. Rather, these questions are far simpler and more pragmatic, and when applied together, are utterly transformational. And here they are. What? So what? Now what? This unique change practitioner tool 
comes from the Human Systems Dynamics Institute and was pioneered by sisters Glendo Young and Royce Halliday in their work on applying complexity science to human organizational systems. Or more simply put, it's known as the adaptive action cycle. Now, as a practitioner, what I love about this tool is that it recognizes that change is a process and not a singular one-time event. In 2019, Harvard researchers exploring the reasons why we find it so hard to make healthy change to our behavior found that successful change only occurred in stages. However long it took didn't matter. How long did it take you to quit smoking? Well, the adaptive action cycle is just that. A simple, iterative planning process that allows you to move through uncertainty. You try something, you observe the patterns that shift, and then you try something again that's fit for purpose. Imagine a kaleidoscope. With every shift, you get infinite patterns and possibilities. And by understanding the dynamics that shape those patterns, you can take what they call one wise action towards your goal. Now, let's just acknowledge in the world of self-improvement, we have this constant feeling of, I'm not good enough. And that's not what the adaptive action cycle is about. It's about moving you through complexity when you're feeling overwhelmed. So how does this practically work? When you feel so overwhelmed, you don't know where to start. Let me give you an example at a micro level that's simple enough to understand from a child's perspective. As I shared earlier, I'm a mom to a perfect little boy diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder. For those of you unfamiliar with the condition, according to the World Health Organization, OCD is a neuropsychiatric disorder, and approximately 5.1 million people have been diagnosed globally. That's roughly the population of Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal combined. And no, it's not the cutesy disorder of liking things just so. And nor is it about solely excessive hand washing and contamination fears, like you see in the films. It can cover any compulsion, and it can be debilitating. Imagine the thing you are most terrified of in the entire world occurring if you don't submit to that compulsion. Shifting mindsets is a constant occupation for my little one. So knowing that our thoughts affect our feelings, which affect our behaviors, he's been able to use the three questions to disempower the voice. Now, full disclosure, don't get me wrong, He's also had tremendous support in exposure and response therapy. But the three questions is a nice, simple way of reframing the challenge of dealing with the annoying voice in the moment. He starts with the what. This is what's known, that it's the OCD voice, and the OCD voice lies to him. And the OCD voice is not him. We've even given it a distinct and delicious nickname, the dictator. So my son knows he is not his thoughts. He then transitions to his so what. This is what is possible. He knows that he has tools around what to do when he encounters the dictator. He then transitions to his now what. Here's where he takes his one wise action. He can imagine his thought as a bubble and pop it with his mental sword. He can take a deep breath and visualize himself riding on the back of a dragon, breathing fire onto an annoying thought. He can delay the compulsion. He can ignore it. He can defy it. Based on how he's feeling after he's applied one of those strategies, this is what informs the decision he takes the next time he encounters the annoying voice. Through therapy, my son has learned however uncomfortable in the moment, that he has the power to disempower the voice. In our modern world, the pace of change is ever emerging, relentless, and complex. So shifting one pattern at a time transforms uncertainty into possibility. Do you feel overwhelmed when attending to a complex task? Try this out. 
Start with what? What patterns in your life are making you feel stuck right now? What do those observations of those patterns mean to you? Know that every choice you make shifts a pattern in your life. Then move to so what? What do you want to see same and different in your future? Where do you see opportunities for making a change? Remember, you may not be able to attend to every issue at once, and nor can you eat a whole elephant in one sitting. But what is one thing you can try right now? And then move to your now what? Here's where you try your one adaptive action. Have a plan, but hold it lightly. Observe the patterns that shift. What shifted? What stayed the same? What surprised you? What will you try now? What will you try again? What will you try differently? Learn from whatever you perceive as failure, as this is what propels you forward in your next adaptive action cycle. It sure beats the ubiquitous New Year's resolution, doesn't it? In my blog, makeoneshift.com, I write about how we as individuals are complex adaptive systems in our own right. Complex systems are made up of many components and interdependencies that interact with each other. Examples include things like climate change, socioeconomic organizations, healthcare systems, living cells, organisms, our brain, the universe. Complex systems are difficult to model because they don't function in predictable or linear ways, which is why I argue at a microcosmic level, we are complex adaptive systems. Well, the adaptive action cycle and the three questions are not only relevant at the micro and organizational level issue, they can also be used to attend to the macro, complex, global level issues we're all too familiar with. Things like poverty, conflict, climate change, extremism, and so forth. Given their numerous interdependent factors, these massive issues seem impossible to solve. And yet, they share a number of similar characteristics in that they're not immediately solvable, there's no one right or wrong way to address them, and they have an infinite number of potential solutions. And it is for this reason that the adaptive action cycle is just one tool that we use when addressing complexity at that level. We leverage the learning from each past cycle to inform our decisions going forward without getting lost in the noise and complexity. So whether you work in war zones, manage complex healthcare systems, are changing your career, or are navigating a difficult relationship, when you feel so overwhelmed, reframing your sticky challenge can help. Say it with me now. What? what? So what? Now what? <laughs> Three mighty questions that can transform uncertainty into possibility. You try something, you observe the patterns that shift, and then you try something again. So in this spirit, try applying this in your own life and see where it takes you. For me, it started with a hastily scrawled post-it note stuck to my bedside table at the height of the pandemic when every day felt like a freakish repetition of the last. On it, it reads, what is one shift you'll do today to change your experience of feeling stuck? Well, the post-it is still attached to my bedside table, but the journey has been extraordinary. I've launched a blog and podcast on applying change management methodology in one's personal life. I've published my first children's book inspired by my son's experience called Louie and the Dictator in the hopes that anxious and neurodiverse children will realize that small shifts in mindsets can transform their circumstances. It's led me to this stage where I have the honor of sharing my experiences with you. I want you to walk away today knowing that you have the power to make whatever necessary shifts are required to elevate your personal experiences, regardless of the complexity of your circumstances. What? So what?
Now what? What is one shift you'll make today? Thank you.